Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Bill Clinton just blindsided President Trump with nasty Father's Day surprise. Trump won't hold back. And just like a really bad case of herpes, the Clintons just can't seem to disappear and they keep popping up. This time everyone's favorite alleged sexual predator and former president Bill B.J. Clinton just couldn't keep his big mouth shut on social media. So he decided it would be a good idea to attack President Trump today, on Father's Day by tweeting out a condemnation about President Trump's efforts to uphold the rule of law and our nation's sovereignty. And then the rest of the Shikos and the Clinton family added to the condemnation. It's so nice to see that after all the sexual scandals Bill Clinton has been a part of the whole family still supports him, kind of heartwarming in a way. Don't you think? Especially after the world-famous Monica Lewinsky scandal and so many others. But what's perhaps even more interesting is how Bill Clinton seems to have an issue with the rule of law now but had no issue whatsoever when he sent in armed troops to remove Elian Gonzalez from his family's home back in 2000. Here is a chronology of the Elian Gonzalez saga via PBS. November 25, 1999 A five-year-old Cuban boy, Elian Gonzalez is found on Thanksgiving Day clinging to an inner tube three miles off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fishermen rescue him and he is taken to a hospital for treatment. But his mother and 11 others on the raft had drowned in their attempt to come to the U.S. from Cuba. November 26. 1999. Elian is released from the hospital into the custody of his uncle, Lazaro Gonzalez, and other relatives in Miami. The Cuban government sends a note to the U.S. mission in Havana requesting Elian's return to Cuba. November 28, 1999. Juan Miguel Gonzalez, Elian's father, files a complaint with the UN to get attention for his custody demands. November 29, 1999. The U.S. State Department recuses itself from considering the custody of Elian. It is left up to the Florida courts. April 7, 2000. After meeting with Juan Miguel Gonzalez, Attorney General Janet Reno announces that U.S. officials will move to transfer Elian to his father. April 12, 2000. Reno meets with Elian's relatives in Miami about the process for transferring the boy to his father, but there's no agreement from the relatives. Over the next several days negotiations continue between the family, Reno and representatives on both sides. April 19, 2000. The 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals grants a request by Elian's Miami relatives to block his return to Cuba. April 22, 2000. In a pre-dawn raid, armed U.S. federal agents seize Elian Gonzalez from the home of his Miami relatives. Elian is reunited with his father a few hours later. But it will take two months before Island and his father would go back to Cuba two months of court procedures and demonstrations and counter-demonstrations in Miami. June 1, 2000. A federal appeals court upholds the U.S. government's authority to deny Elian a political asylum hearing. June 28, 2000. Elian Gonzalez and his father, stepmother and half-brother arrive in Cuba to a jubilant reception. Their return comes just hours after the U.S. Supreme Court rejects a last-ditch effort by the Miami relatives to keep him in the U.S. Yup, those of us who can remember those days will never forget the moment we say breaking news and the picture of the armed troop pointing that a five at Elian and the fishermen who found him as they were hiding in the closet in order to save him from being deported to the communist hell that is the island of Cuba. Back then people like the Clinton gang had no issue with separating children from their families. And oddly enough no issue with anyone pointing an AR-15 at a young child. Interesting, don't you agree? It's really a shame that the American public has such short memories. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.